no point. We have no money. So right. Maybe in the future at some point. Yep. No, we get that. I mean, it's, you know, honestly, it's still tough out there. You know what I mean? I mean, there's no doubt and about it. And I wasn't it. even thinking with the with the nursing homes about, like, people pulling people out, people not putting people in, the rehab, like, all yeah, aspects, they're just, they're just, like, so down. I know. And I wish I had this on a, I wish we would have had um, this set up in Tiger Pod to do one massive email with a click of a button to everybody versus me trying to go back in and resend everything out. Yeah, that's where you want to probably, well, what's the best way to do it, like, would have to be um, I mean, I know send it to Darcy for your accounts and she'll blast it out or... I mean, Sam and I walked through, but we did it so long ago, I would not yeah. remember how to go in. Tiger Pod's not ideal for that. But, like, um, what was the other platform? Well, there's Constant Contact, and what was the other one we used for a while? But anyway, we'd have to pick a platform. Or just send it to Darcy and let her blast it. Say, here's the list, Darcy, blast it to just my customers and for this message. <coughs> So anyway, story to tell you about the town of Rotterdam. So there we go. <clears throat> okay, okay, everybody ready to go? Sure. All our beautiful, wonderful panelists and our team here. So, well, I just want to thank everyone for taking time today. Thanks for jumping on. My name is Kevin Grace. I'm executive. VP of Sales and Marketing at Northeast IS. This is our second ASCOM webinar. We're looking forward to having these every roughly 90 days. Uh, the hope is to go live possibly in the fall, but we'll wait and see what our governor says or what the uh, what the best thing, the most appropriate thing will be to do. Uh, we hope you receive the gift box that we sent out as a token of our appreciation to our valued customers. We realize that things are challenging still. My, my wife's actually a teacher and the thing that she has the trouble with the most is wearing a mask every day. So we, we can appreciate that. So on behalf of Northeast IS, we appreciate you. Uh, we, we thank you for caring for the elderly, the aging population and the, and the acute care patients. I'd like to introduce our wonderful team today. We've got uh, C.G. Frank, who's the president of Northeast IS. If you could just wave your hand, which you did, C.G., thank you. Uh, we've got Dean Westcott, who's our senior sales executive. Dean, if you could wave your hand. And then we have Sherry Dunlap, who's our sales executive. Sherry, go away, thank you. And then we've got the most wonderful, beautiful Julia Greer from ASCOM, who's our presenter down in North Carolina. Uh, so thanks for joining us, Julie, and thanks for all your time. So just quickly, Northeast IS offers cloud phone solutions, camera systems, door access, managed IT. We've got Laura Oaks. Sorry, Laura. You came on late in the uh, airport. She's our, uh, she's our rep, our ASCOM rep. So sorry about that, Laura. Um, so again, Northeast offers cloud phone solutions, camera systems, door access, managed IT services, and of course, today, healthcare solutions. Uh, we're committed to continually educating ourselves on the latest and most beneficial health care products so we can deliver those to you and your teams. And our focus is service first always, and we're a high touch company, and we've been that way roughly for 40 years. Uh, so housekeeping, we will have a chat window open up and Dean Westcott will moderate the chat. So please, uh, we're going to try and answer as many questions as we can. If we don't, we'll call you back within the next couple of days and get those questions answered to you. Uh, we're looking to wrap up around 11.40, 11.45. So, uh, we, and again, we appreciate your time. We know everyone's busy. So next, I'd like to introduce 
C.G. Frank, who's my business partner and the president of Northeast IS, and C.G., you're muted, by the way, uh, just to uh, talk about quickly our relationship with ASCOM and then introduce properly Julia from ASCOM, who's going to be doing the presenting today. So, C.G., over to you, my friend. Well, thank you, Kevin. And again, welcome to everybody. I see a number of familiar names on the uh, um, attendee list. So thank you for taking the time out of your busy day to join us here this morning. You know, I just uh, recap a little bit of Northeast, as you may or may not know, but just to fill everybody in, it's been around since 1972. So we've had a long track history and, and have supported healthcare institutions uh, throughout that entire period of uh, our existence. You know, first through many, many years through the Executone product line, uh, and then it eventually trans transitioning from there to some products from uh, Tyco and most recently to ASCOM. And we're thrilled to have two representatives here from ASCOM uh, to present some of the newer technologies to you. Uh, ASCOM is a mobile solution provider. They are focused on healthcare and mobile workflow solutions. And we've been a part ASCOM elite partner for the last uh, six or seven years and have been just thrilled with the, uh, the support of ASCOM, their sales and technical staff and overall support organization. Um, ASCOM is a global company. As I mentioned, they're headquartered actually in Switzerland, operating in over 18 countries with approximately 1,300 employees. So they bring a lot of depth to the, or to the uh, field through both their healthcare solutions and wireless solutions. So as I said, we're, we're very excited to have them join us here today and share this valuable information with you as well. So I'd like to introduce uh, our guest uh, speaker here. We'll bring on just a moment, Julia Greer. Julia is an RN and a BSN and ASCOM America's Director of Clinical Strategy and Workflow Solutions. So Julia has been with ASCOM a number of years and is very much recognized for her ability to unite employee needs with a hospital's goals and objectives. So she has hands-on experience working with facilities all over the country. So any challenges you may face or have today, you may certainly ask Julia. I suspect she's encountered those more than once in her career through ASCOM and prior to that as a, a clinician and working in those environments. So we're thrilled to have her join us here for the presentation. Uh, now, before we get started, we do have uh, one polling question. We're gonna have several polling questions throughout the uh, presentation. We wanna bring up and just kind of get your uh, feedback on this particular item. So Kevin, can you bring up a polling question? Can you see that guys? We can. Okay. And there it is. So what I'm looking for is uh, if you could just respond to this, we'll give you everybody a, a few seconds here. What mobility devices, if any, are you currently using at your facility? Uh, pocket pagers, so they're fairly common in the past. Wireless phones, tablets, wireless tablets, we're seeing very, fairly common or perhaps you don't have any wireless technologies today that are in common use. So if you could click on that, submit, and grab a quick poll. So that'll kind of give us an idea of uh, your familiarity with mobility technology in the healthcare setting. Beautiful, we'll give it another 10 seconds here, but we're getting close. Okay. So it looks like, I think everybody answered, I'm gonna end the poll. And Great. If we can, uh share the results here. So if CG, I'm gonna share those results if you wanna go over those quickly and we'll- Sure. Yeah. Well, it looks like we have a mixture, which is kind of what I suspected. So some people are still using pocket pagers, about a quarter. Number of people are using wireless phones. So you'll, this will be familiar ground for you, but I think uh, Julie will be sharing some new information you may find very interesting. Wireless tablets, 40%. Uh, We're seeing a wide adoption of wireless tablets for uh, access to electronic medical records, and I suspect that only to increase. And then again, there's some who are, have yet to adopt any wireless technology. So thank you very much for that feedback. It helps us, you know, kind of understand your perspective on uh, mobility in the healthcare arena. So without any further ado, I'd like to introduce Julia to take us through ASCOM a little bit, as well as the presentation on healthcare mobility solutions. Take it away, Julia. Thank you very much. Uh, good morning, everyone. I too extend my appreciation to you for signing on and listening to us this morning. I did want to reaffirm that our session is being recorded today. Uh, we will be taking questions, but those questions will be through the chat window. I am Julia Greer and I work for ASCOM and as they said, have for many years. I hope to share with you today uh, some information that maybe is a good refresher and a few things that are new to you. Uh, 
we have introduced our company very well as far as it being a global company. And certainly our specialty at ASCOM is the fact that we are an information and communications technology provider. Our goal is to solve problems and provide you solutions within your organization. And my slide does not want to advance. So what is up with that? Yeah. Check that out. Now, did we not just practice this? <laughs> it's not moving. The huh? challenges, always the challenges of uh, virtual it technology. Is, it is not moving. All right. There we go. Yay. Yay. Okay. Finally, it decided to respond. Maybe my hand was too cold. What we wanna talk about today is the fact that mobility devices are able to provide you more than just a way to pick up the phone and call someone. Even though that is very important to us every day within healthcare facilities, let's think about some of the things that it can do to provide solutions to some of the things that aggravate us as clinicians at the bedside. We can integrate medical devices be it a physiologic patient monitor, be it a bed exit or chair exit monitoring device. Uh, we can provide care team coordination through specific uh, compliant chat applications. Certainly again, the fact that this is mobile, that you can take it with you wherever you go and nurses and other clinicians don't find themselves having to go back to a designated nursing station or office in order to use a phone. There's nothing worse than being a uh, care provider in a facility, having reached out to an external care provider, and then playing that phone tag game, waiting for them to return your calls. So certainly just being able to be mobile with that information has greatly improved our ability to provide care while on the go. Mobile solutions also give us opportunities to reduce some of the bottlenecks that we uh, incur in our systems. And we'll talk some more about examples of those bottlenecks later. Sometimes we think of bottlenecks as more as a manufacturing or logistics situation, uh, but there are some that are very specific to healthcare. And as we provide these integrations with devices, we can communicate with our coworkers better uh, and we get these bottlenecks opened up that can only lead to improved workflows and uh, better patient satisfaction, as well as improving scoring of your facilities by your staff and by your patients or residents. So let's see if the slide's gonna move again. <gasps> it went the wrong way. <laughs> there it goes. Okay, so what you see on your screen now is a replication of what a nurse might do during her day. Look at her going from place to place. She has to go to her room to find out what a patient or a resident wants. Then she has to go back out to get to those things. She is constantly on the move and averages walking multiple miles a day. I want to talk to you about the opportunity with mobility devices to talk before you walk to know what you need before you go into your resident apartment or your patient room. So you see lots of dots on this map at this point, and it's showing the bigger the dot, the greater amount of time that this nurse that was followed to create this diagram, what she was doing in those locations. So let's take a look at what those might show us. Oh, there we go. So those big blue dots, that 35% is what all healthcare providers do that they probably like the least about their jobs. None of us went into healthcare to spend our time taking care of and nursing a chart or a computer, but it absolutely does require a very large portion of our day. Uh, not only is that dissatisfying for us as care providers, it is also a dissatisfier for your patients when they see us constantly with our noses in our computers or writing in our charts. The other thing that jumps out is the next largest section is care coordination, 21% of our time. This involves things as arranging for 
therapies that may be provided outside of our facility or within other departments in our facility, getting durable medical equipment, arranging for transportation. It's all of those care coordination uh, phone calls and back and forth. Again, imagine completing care coordination effectively and in a timely manner if you don't have a mobile device and you're having to do that back and forth phone tag and probably a lot of voicemails. Now with mobile technology, we can do that with chat apps, we can do it with text messaging, and of course we can do it with direct phone calls wherever we go because we are on the move. The next area that we spend a lot of time in is medication or medical uh, administration. And this actually in this graph represents providing medical procedures or support and caring for uh, the patient as well as their actual medication administration. The, uh, I actually misspoke there, the patient care uh, is the 19%, just a little bit above the medication administration at 17%. So you see that, again, we still, no matter how we slice and dice this pie, nurses are on the move doing multi, multiple tasks and trying to multitask, stay in tune and do what they really want to do, which is be at the bedside, taking care of that patient and being with them in their rooms. So let's take a look at another slide. So how do we get patients and how do we solve workflow problems in our facilities? You know, we need to think about getting patients in. We have to get them in and we have to move them through our system efficiently. Time is money. It could be as simple as what this uh, slide represents of actually getting someone registered within our facility, getting them to the ancillary departments within the facility before they can actually have their physician's app appointment if they were in a clinic setting or can be admitted to their patient room, or they can uh, see all of these outpatient facilities that are providing these pharmacy, lab, radiology uh, services that then we get them back to our facility to admit them into a long-term care situation such as their apartment or room. So you can take this slide and apply it to whatever your type of facility is. I will digress a little bit more uh, toward acute care for a second. Certainly patient flow in areas that are high volume and high turnover, but profitable. Those are the things that we really need to be efficient on. Let's think about what we can do for areas such as OR turnover and throughput, ER turnover and throughput. Those areas absolutely are money makers. And when those rooms are down or we're not using those spaces efficiently, that is money that is just not being captured. The same is also true of some of the specialty radiology uh, procedures as well as cardiac catheterization labs. I talked about bottlenecks and sometimes bottlenecks are a little bit blurry in our healthcare industry for a couple of reasons. Uh, and that, you know, my picture is kind of blurry to go right with that. Because again, what we see some days it's just, oh, this always takes us a long time to get this done. It's always been this way. But let's look at it in a new way. How can we change it? And how can mobility help with these bottlenecks to move patients through faster? ASCOM provides a clinical workflow analysis as well as a consultation so that anytime someone utilizes an ASCOM product, a clinician from our uh, company will be engaged with the clinicians in your facilities that are providing care. They're gonna talk with you and ask you questions in an attempt to understand what is your workflow. They are not gonna be the ones that tell you no, what you're doing is wrong or no, you should do it this way, but we will give you examples of what we have seen in other areas and particular methodologies that we have seen significant increase in productivity, increase in satisfaction scores, increase in staff satisfaction. So we will consult with you to talk about those issues within your facility and really understand your workflow 
can help you find some areas for improvement. Once these consultations are completed, they will also take the time to complete documents that are what we consider clinical design worksheets. These are just some examples that I've popped up really quickly that relate to getting nurse call alerts or patient monitoring alerts to that mobile device. Once with this portion has been completed, those same clinicians will work with you to schedule an appropriate training plan and see to it that training is provided to you in a situation that works for you. It could be train the trainer. It could be all the way to the fact that the ASCOM trainers do end user training. We will also talk with you about the need for remote versus on-site training based on your unit types, COVID, and uh, facility restrictions. We get the training completed and the next thing that's gonna happen is we're gonna be on site with you when you turn the system on and take it live. And following that go live, we're gonna to touch back with you. How is it going? Does it need to be fine tuned? What can we do to make the system work for you even better? Because many times, and it's completely understandable that where we start with that plan may need some specific customized adjustments uh, when we make those follow-up visits. So what do we do to get information to the right person at the right time and put it in the palm of their hand? Uh, ASCOM does this through these three little blocks. And if you've uh, seen or heard ASCOM presentations or understood much about our philosophy of taking care, you will understand that we talk about integrations, getting all that information from other places that the nurses need, because they're all in disparate individual locations. So we're going to help you come up with what integrations do you want. Oops, I did not want to go. There we go. I want to be able to capture that monitor information, nurse call, alerts that come from your EMR or your lab system or your radiology system. Maybe you need to get information from a department that is bringing patients or residents to you. We want to help you capture that. So this is our part that we talk about capturing of data, creating integrations. And our goal is to get it over here to your hand. What device is in your hand or in your pocket? Well, that can't just happen automatically. It requires some work in the middle. And this is where we say the ASCOM magic happens. This you will hear called our middleware, our support software, the brain of our system. But today what we wanna talk about specifically are the end use devices and the ASCOM mobility solution. But again, we can get you that solution as a standalone communication device only, but we can bring you a more powerful solution certainly when we focus on getting this information from all these disparate places and people to your hand. All right, time That's for a polling cue. question. That's my cue, right, Julia? It is. All right, here we go. Come on, Kev, you can do this. Okay, so we've got the next poll up. And I'll, CG, do you wanna go ahead and uh, facilitate the poll? Sure, I can help out there. So this is a topic uh, which is probably of concern to everybody is serious medical errors. Uh, and according to the Joint Commission Center for Transforming Healthcare, uh, they did a study and but we wanna know what your feedback is, what percentage of serious medical area errors rather are caused by miscommunication? So if you wanna, to your best of your knowledge, select one of those options and submit, and then we'll uh, return with the uh, what people think and uh, Julia will provide the correct answer. I wanted to have that music playing. Da, 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 <laughs> da, 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 yeah, we need we need da, the Jeopardy music. Da, we need we need some music. I, I'm I'm a little out of tune there, but um I can't remember what show was that from. That wasn't uh Jeopardy. Jeopardy. Jeopardy, right? Okay. Yeah. Right. We'll give it another few seconds here. We're we're getting there. Ba, ba, da, 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 da. Here we go. We're going to end this poll. We're going to have the results. Great. In a second. We're going to share the results. And here we go. Can you see that, Shiji? I can. So, you know, spread across the board, 
from 20 to 50, we've got a, a variety. Most people think uh, in, the, in their neighborhood of 80% of medical area errors in a healthcare environment caused by miscommunication. So it's a significant uh, amount of errors uh, due to miscommunication issues. So Julia, you wanna address that? That is absolutely uh, correct. Our 41% were right at 80%. That uh, ability to get the appropriate communication from one care provider to another is extremely important. It can uh, make the difference between a patient's life, a significant injury, and it can also impact your facility financially as many of those miscommunications and resulting uh, sentinel events uh, will end up in court. And I appear frozen again, post polling question. All right, Julie, let me know. I've got a copy of the presentation here just in case. All right, we're just trying to, yeah. all right. It, it decided to work again. It yeah. seems to take a little break after that polling question. This is, a, this is another view of the last slide that I talked about just before we moved to that polling question. And it's just to reemphasize the importance of good communication of all the information from the disparate systems to those end devices that we are gonna delve into a little bit deeper. So what are those devices that ASCOM provides? You can see a variety of them in this picture. Uh, we will talk about each of them a little bit more in depth. Uh, you will notice there will be some overlap and consistency from our beginning level simple product all the way up to our complex smart device. Uh, we like to be as complete as we can with every device to allow the maximum use and functionality in a healthcare system. You don't notice on this slide any um, devices provided by other, other manufacturers, but I wanna address that for just a second in that ASCOM is agnostic. If you are a facility that has a significant investment in another device, or you want to use an off-the-shelf commercial device, we will assist you with using our technology and getting the same information to that handset. But enough of that, let's talk about what these phones do for you. Number one, if you give a nurse a handset of phone, what does she want to do? She wants to talk and wants it to be reliable and clear. She doesn't want dropped calls. She doesn't want to have garbled sound uh, when she's talking to each other because if my communication is not clear and I am talking with a physician, right there is a huge opportunity for a miscommunication and an error to take place. How do we work with that? ASCOM has been in the uh, telephony market for many years. It's one of our strong suits and our devices are known for being able to provide you a good solid voice technology. We also want to provide you alert uh, information. These devices are all set up so that they can receive those alerts that we talked about a few slides back coming from other departments or other systems monitors devices in patient or resident rooms. How do we do that? You know, we want to make sure that the care provider, the nurse, the CNA, the any kind of healthcare personnel that is participating in the care of your patients or residents, that they get the right information at the right time and that they know what they need to do with it and that they can incorporate that into their plan of care and notify others that are involved in this uh, particular patient or resident's care so that they can be informed and make a good decision and plan of care. The biggest thing that we hear though, when we talk about getting the alerts and the information to the right person at the right time is how much is the right amount. Alarm fatigue and alert fatigue are talked about incessantly in our industry today. You will find it's also something that is um, addressed in standards for all of our organizations now of how are you addressing alert and alarm fatigue. 
ASCOM with that magic brain in the middle that I referenced earlier uh, is where we have the ability to provide some filters, delays, and to take care of getting the nurses the alerts that they need, things that are actionable and require an intervention and not just the noise that comes from all of these devices and solutions that really do not impact or influence what we need to do to take care of our patient in uh, a proper fashion. Is it possible that we have another polling question already? We do. It's, um, it's really about what folks want to see the next time. So we might we might skip this one and do it at the end. Uh, yeah, let's hold that to the end. Yeah. Okay. So let's see if it will let me slide right by this time. It did. See, it's your polling questions that freeze my computer. That's what it is. <laughs> I'm going to speak to All here. right. So here is a close up of some of the handsets and mobility solution offerings uh, from ASCOM. We're going to now go and look at these just a little more detailed. What you see on the phone right now is what is considered our uh, 63 version phone. And you'll see on my screen, it talks about D63, but this also comes in an I63. What the difference in this that I want to emphasize to you here and that we will talk about with every device that ASCOM will show you today is that we can provide this technology in one of two ways for getting voice communication. D stands for debt. It's an isolated network that can be specifically put into your facility for extreme reliability, or if you do not have a strong wireless infrastructure. Whenever you see an I in front of one of our devices, that means that we are going to be using a wireless infrastructure, infrastructure within your facility to provide that voice across these devices. I won't get into the technical part of that because this is clinical and uh, I just wanna know that it works, whether it's on a DEC network or it's on a Wi-Fi network. Every one of our devices uh, not only provides you that communication, they all can provide you alerts in one form or fashion of another. But something I wanna point out for sure is the fact that we have a personal safety opportunity with every one of these devices as well. In today's market, in our situation, we are finding more and more instances where care providers are being attacked or mistreated or have an accident in the building themselves or a health crisis themselves within the building and they need immediate assistance. Our devices deliver you the opportunity of a single touch button for rapid deployment of getting security or a needed a medical attention to the location of where the nurse or uh, other healthcare provider presses that multifunction personal safety button. All of our devices are also ready for being used in a healthcare setting. It means that they are made of materials that are resistant to germs and holding germs, but it also tells you that they are gonna hold up to healthcare grade quality uh, cleaning products and solutions. And we'll talk a little bit more about that as we move through. Because as we talk about each of these devices, you're going to understand that they all have the same basic key importance. Good phone call, good alerting, safe in the environment, as well as being able to be cleaned professionally. Now, this particular device may not be the most popular that you would see in your healthcare setting. This is a little more ruggedized, but we do see that some hospitals will deploy this particular device with their uh, biomedical engineering teams, with their environmental services teams, with their facilities management teams. But this one, uh, it's meant to uh, stand up and uh, be a little bit tougher and even more durable uh, in uh, the healthcare setting. And the other thing that you'll notice here is that it is intrinsically safe. That means that this device can be used in highly flammable areas without fear of sparking. 
So now let's look at this device and I'm gonna tap my slide here a couple times to get some multiple uh, things to appear on the screen before I start talking. This device is our smart device. And what it gives you is the capability of having apps on your phone. It gives you capabilities for a more advanced texting and collaboration opportunity. We can all certainly text on any of our devices, but I think we're accustomed to having a true keyboard activated device for this type of communication now. Uh, and I'm gonna talk a little bit more about the importance of getting that information and what this device gives you in greater advantages uh, than maybe some of the other devices. Yes, it will give me that same alert. Perhaps I got an alert from a physiologic monitor about a patient's heart rate or blood pressure or their SpO2, and it came perfectly to those other devices that I uh, just showed you. And it will tell you that you have an alert of a high or a low uh, associated with the uh, monitor type or parameter type. When I have a smartphone, I not only now get that same basic alert information, I have the ability to see a waveform, a graph, a pleth, and that gives me more information. Again, it is going to give me the ability to apply apps that you use within your facility, perhaps your intranet, uh, where people can access policies and procedures. If you can uh, imagine that you now have gone from just a phone with alerting capabilities in your hand, you now have an entire computer in your hand and that power. If you notice the little boxes off to the left, I certainly want to, again, this is uh, similar to something that you've seen on a couple other slides uh, from me today. And that was showing the fact that, again, you are getting information into our systems here, whether it is the bed, it's the nurse call, it's those medical devices, and we're bringing it out here to this mobility solution. And with the smart solution, now you see the applications that I have just re referenced that you may find useful in your facility. And again, in the middle is my brain. That's where my magic happens and where all of my data is massaged and manipulated. And what that allows me to do is to integrate that data from all of those input uh, locations to orchestrate it and manipulate it in the middle and then to take it to that end use handset or uh, mobile device so that you, the nurse, the care provider, any support staff have the information that they are now enabled to provide the best of care to their patient and hopefully eliminating some of those communication gaps and errors. We talked earlier about alarm and alert fatigue. I won't spend a lot of time on uh, this particular slide, but again, uh, you will recognize this if you are one of the uh, uh, healthcare providers that uh, administers medications. We're using the same five rights here in regards to medications of getting the right information to the right person at the right time, at the right place, and in the right mode. Am I giving that to you by text? Am I giving you that by a phone call? And am I giving you just what you need and not an excess that clutters up your device or clutters up your mind and trying to process it? We want you to have what you need. I am you, me, I am not gonna make a mistake. I am not gonna be as distracted when I can follow these five steps and deliver to you only what you need. I'm going to take just a minute to look at this device in greater detail because it is the smart device and it has all of the functions of any smart device that you ever use. Again, I'm not going to read to you on this slide and I know that we have our target time for finishing up uh, here in just the next few minutes, but I want to assure you that these devices are a full service smart device. They are manufactured with durability and ease of use in mind. These devices are highly water resistant, not waterproof. They are built rugged so that they can take the abuse that maybe, you know, when I'm putting that phone in my pocket and I miss and it goes to the floor, 
Uh, we know that happens. So yes, our devices are built to accommodate that and know that they're gonna take more use and abuse than all of uh, the commercial devices. I promise you, if you uh, drop your own personal cell phone off of a nursing station ledge, it's not gonna survive that fall, but these devices will. These devices are also um, meant for you to use them with the intranet, if that is something your facility desires. They have cameras that can be used for barcode scanning, as well as documenting uh, images, such as wound assessment, uh, domestic or child abuse situations. Uh, perhaps we are sharing pictures across to care providers that need a good look at a particular uh, patient uh, or injury. I have really good stories. If we had more time, I would tell you about some of the things that we can identify and share with uh, other areas to identify what has bitten uh, patients, but those are stories for another day. Here I wanna talk just about the battery real quick. These batteries are something that make all of our devices a step above something that you get off the shelf. With our, bat, with our device, you can hot swap that battery. It means if I am logged in in the middle of documenting something on my device related to my patient's care and my battery goes out, I can simply swap it out. And I have a good full two minutes to get that swap made and I won't lose my place or even be logged out of that device. Uh, so how do we charge these batteries? Uh, we provide to you multiple charging options, such as desktop chargers that you can see on the uh, one side of the screen. On the other side, you just a side of the screen right here, you simply see the battery. And we have professional charging racks that these batteries slide into so that you can have multiple batteries and always have extra. Every phone that is ever purchased from ASCOM comes with two batteries so that you have that extra supply. We do wanna talk about the smart device and the fact that we are available and open to do uh, uh, private chat and that it is secure and compliant and encrypted. None of that data will remain on the device itself. So if that device uh, finds itself outside of the building, uh, it will not function. That data cannot be retrieved because the data is on the server. I would also tell you that every uh, communication that is provided through that type of scenario on our device or through our app that allows uh, customers to uh, put it on one of their bring your own device. If someone's using an iPhone or another um, uh, uh, Android device, we can put our app and keep that same information secure on our servers and not in danger or allow that uh, to go out the building or for someone to have access to information that they should not be privy to. Here's an example again of what some of those charging devices are. And I happened to talk to that slide before I got to it. So we will just skip right past that slide. Here we talk more about the team collaboration and I have referred to that as well. And this gives us the ability to have not just a single chat with an individual that is helping me care for this patient, but I can collaborate with the entire team. I can incorporate in the physicians, the respiratory therapist, uh, the consulting physician and the nurse all at the same time. Again, this allows a complete and solid communication versus the story being told from one care provider to the next to the next. Uh, that's how we get into those situations of the old telephone game that we played as children, but it still applies to healthcare when we are telling that same story and patient circumstance to every care provider individually. By having this opportunity to do care team collaboration, we close that gap and everyone hears the same thing at the same time. The name of that particular tool is uh, Collaborate. Uh, and uh, I will not, uh, again, read the slide to you, but it will give you all of these opportunities to pull these things together. Again, it's getting the whole story, the whole picture, doing a complete collaboration and consultation as a care team. I referenced the personal alarm uh, earlier. 
And I like to reemphasize that because it has become way too common in our settings. Sometimes it is simply a confused patient. Sometimes it is a patient who's having a bad reaction to a medication. Sometimes it is because we have someone in our building who is attempting to do something that is absolutely horrible and causing harm to either patients or healthcare staff. We've talked about the fact that these devices are durable and robust. They are meant to handle what we do to them. I will talk just a tiny bit more in this, uh, on this slide, just about cleaning our devices. We will provide to every customer that uses our devices a complete list of solutions that can be applied to cloths to wipe a device, as well as a complete list of all of the various types of uh, canned wipes that you can buy uh, ready to go that can be used on our devices. We test all of our devices thoroughly to make sure that we can hold up to the required levels of requirement in healthcare. And I think we all have uh, learned more about making sure every surface is extra clean in this past year. Again, we have the chargers here. I'm not going to talk about that anymore. Oh, earlier I talked about uh, how we can integrate all of the information from various systems, people, records, devices. We put it in the middle and we analyze it and massage it and we take it to that uh, handheld device uh, so that the uh, care provider is enabled to use it properly for their care. But let's talk about another little piece real quickly that allows us to have a complete audit trail and to then take that data and provide meaningful and useful reporting out of every piece of information. That brain, that place where I talk about the magic that happens, it has a particular application called Unite Analyze, and that is where we can help you investigate any kind of situation or complaint. Uh, because it will show every single button press, reception, clearing of a data. It will incorporate RTLS data so that I can do some tracing of who was where and what location and may have been exposed to a COVID patient. This tool is extremely powerful. And not only do we provide this to you with a certain amount of reports already developed, we will also help you gain access to this database so that you can customize and use this data, SQL database in other ways for your information. I know that I am running out of time. I have probably talked a little long, hopefully not too fast, but I hope today I gave you just a little hint about the ASCOM Mobility Portfolio and that we have intrigued you to perhaps ask us to uh, provide you some more detailed information for your situation. Thank you again for listening to me today and. Uh, I will turn it back over to uh, the good guys there uh, running the show for us. Thank you, Julia. So uh, thanks, Julia. Golf clap. Very nice presentation. We appreciate it. And uh, thank you, thank you. we'll spend another minute or two on the chat. Dean, are there any questions that need to be answered that Julia can answer? If we can't answer them today, we'll get back to them. I've got a few questions that came in. Thanks. So uh question comes in from B&B Integrations asking if the ASCOM mobility solutions can, these handsets can integrate with their EHS or their electronic health record systems. Um, absolutely. There would be an interface that would uh, be built, but absolutely we can interface with those EHRs. What we find the most common interfaces are the ADT information, admit, discharge, and transfer, so that uh, and when you get an alert to your device, it doesn't just give you a room number of a device of where the alert or the information is coming from. It can provide you that patient name uh, and more details about them. Uh, and some facilities will advance and work on other interfaces so that you can do rapid uh, charting, quick charting of such things as vital signs in and out of those EHRs. And we also have folks that will take the EHR alerts uh, where they are providing uh, information regarding a uh, lab result, a critical lab result that uh, needs to be seen. And that alert from the EHR can deploy to the handsets. So yes, many options and opportunities there. 
great. That really shows the power of the, this integration, the ESCOM mobility solutions being able to make things so much more efficient in the healthcare settings. Uh, here's another one. Uh, so these mobile devices may or may not have personal information on them. Is the ESCOM product line HIPAA compliant? Again, uh, what I would like to be sure is that you understand is that with our smart devices, that are the ones that are most likely to have detailed patient information or personal information. We make sure that that information is kept on the server uh, and not on the device itself. And the other thing that's important to always recall, uh, recall is that when our devices leave the facility, they are non-functional. They will only work within the facility for which they have rights and permissions. Great. A uh, couple more here. Uh, facility is using pagers today. Can the CNAs continue to carry these pagers? Uh, you kind of already touched that they do, and this does interface with other equipment out there, right? So. Yep, and the answer is yes. If you have pagers that you want to continue to use, we have the ability to continue to push information to those pagers. Uh, I would certainly talk to you about your workflow uh, and uh, let's talk about are those pagers still serving the purpose that you need them to? Uh, and maybe it's time to uh, look at upgrading them, but if not, and it's not in your budget to do that, we're not gonna tell you too bad you can't use them. We are absolutely going to work with you and get the information to those pagers. Yeah, this is so much more information you can see on the handsets, the, especially the micro handsets, than uh, you can on a pager. That's good. Yes. And, uh, and the handsets allow two way communication. The majority of pagers in the, uh, that are out there are one way communication only. And as soon as I get that two way communication going that a handset allows, Again, I have improved the opportunity to take good care of my patient and not have miscommunication. All right. Uh, my favorite is uh, so staff safety. It's always a big issue, and unfortunately, it's uh, more and more of an issue as we move along here. But uh, I mean, these products are are great in the healthcare settings. I've seen them used in other facilities as well, especially hospitality. Can you touch on how these devices can help improve the safety of the staff? I can't agree with you anymore. Um, it is just astonishing at how much emphasis is out there right now because of the increased incidence of needing emergent care because visitors, patients, staff are finding themselves in dangerous situations. It is a feature that we like to have in our devices. It's in every one of our devices, and we encourage everyone to set it up. And that's pretty much just a hot button, right? You it is. Right to the yeah. security officer and somebody response team and they it can is. find a location and, and respond, right? It absolutely is. And uh, actually on the slide that's still visible, uh, you can see the button uh, that we're talking about, uh, the little multifunction button right there on the top. It looks similar to that on every one of our devices and they are all located on the top of each device. So no matter which device you're using, uh, with ASCOM, you will have that uh, button up on your device that can be programmed to uh, go straight to your security department. Great. Well, that's uh, all the questions we have time for today. Is, uh, there's others out there. We'll respond to those uh, offline. But Julia, thank you so much. Kevin, you're back welcome. To thank you. Have a great day, everyone. Yep. So we're almost done. Um, you know, we've got one other poll question, then we're going to wrap it up. Thank you, Dean. And hang in there, Julia. Okay. <laughs> I'll let uh, CG manage this poll, but um, I just launched the poll. And uh, can everybody see that? Yeah, I can see it. it. So thank you again. I want to thank everybody for uh, taking time out of their busy day to attend. I know we've still got most people still here on the line, but as uh, Kevin mentioned, we are planning on doing this on a continued basis to provide more uh, information and education to our clients. And right now our next uh, event is scheduled for June 10th. And we're asking you what you would you like to learn more about at that presentation. Uh, chat choices are how real-time location services or RTLS can improve patient care efficiency. Another would be how electronic medical signage and wall boards can improve HCAP scores and coordination of care. 
Third, third option is fall prevention strategies and allergies that provide early detection to reduce risk. And finally, how wireless emergency call systems can provide enhanced safety and security for residents and staff. So go ahead and select one of those and uh, we'll use that information and feedback we get to determine what is of most relevance for our next uh, webinar event on June. So again, I want to thank you all for uh, attending the presentation today. Hope everyone found it valuable. Please feel free to reach out to us with any questions, concerns, or if you'd like to learn more in depth via a uh, individual personal presentation. Great. Back to you, Kat. Yep. Hey, thanks, CG. I think we're done for today. Uh, thank you, Julia. Thanks for the team, Sherry, Julia, Dean, Rob, who is making calls, CG. Uh, thanks for putting this, we, we all put this together. We uh, do we want to go over the poll question answers, or sure. yeah? So there's our answer. CG, go ahead. Um, oh, hang on. on. Maybe if I press. Yeah, share, I there, there we go. Thank you. I uh, wasn't seeing that. So looks like the winner, at least as far as the game of most interest, was the fall prevention strategies. And I know across the board, whether you're in anywhere from assisted living through skilled skilled nursing and acute care, fall prevention and avoiding fall falls uh, is an ongoing continuous issue. And I know uh, Department of Health and Joint Commission, you know, often that is uh, something that they rate and look at very carefully. So uh, we do have 60% there, 50% on the wire call systems, which are becoming much more prevalent. And then some interest in medical signage, uh, but not as much in RTLS. So thank you very much for the feedback. And we'll certainly take this into uh, our planning for that upcoming webinar. Great. All right, gang. So that's a wrap. Thank you for attending and enjoy the beautiful weather. All right. Thank you all for being here. Bye-bye.